Greetings ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mangs, and I welcome you guys to the very first part of a brand new Civilization 5 playthrough. This time around, I am going to be playing as Wu Zaitan of the Chinese Empire, and also, for the very first time, I am having a go at Deity difficulty. Uh, I figured that uh, if I'm going to be trying a deity game, I might as well try to play as one of the best civilizations in the game. And uh, I do consider the Chinese Empire up there among the better ones. So a lot of you guys have also been requesting a China playthrough. So let's hope this is going to be an interesting game. Uh, I'm certainly looking forward to it. So let's talk a little bit about the Chinese and what exactly makes them such a good civilization. Their civilization bonus is called Art of War. Um, their great generals spawn 50% faster and they also provide a 15% bigger bonus, up to a total of 30%. Um, this means that if you can somehow manage to get a Chinese great general, uh, you'll always have an edge of over your opponent. You gotta take into consideration that they probably have a great general themselves, especially on Deity. So you're always gonna be 50% better than your opponent, which is a pretty significant bonus. Um, they have one of the best unique units in the game in the Chukonu. It is a crossbowman that has, uh, I do believe, four less ranged combat strength as opposed to uh, the normal crossbowman. I do believe normal crossbows have 18 range strength, but uh, you can correct me on that if you want to. Uh, um, however, the Chukunu comes with a unique promotion that allows it to shoot twice. So they're much better than regular crossbowmen. They are, in fact, probably one of the best unique units in the game. And I do say that a lot, but these guys are insane. Uh, they're up there uh, in the same tier as Camel Archers and Keshiks. They can, like, if you get a bunch of these guys out early, you can conquer empires with them. You should at least be able to conquer your closest neighbor which should give you a very good advantage. And on the defense, they're also simply amazing. It's almost impossible to take Chinese territory uh, fortified with Chukunus uh, backing them up. So, yeah, Chukunus, really good unit. They also have a unique building, a papermaker. It's a unique library, and that is always a good thing, because, of course, the library is what you want to build immediately, especially on Deity difficulty, where science is so important. The papermaker is a normal library that has no upkeep, and it also gives plus two gold. And it actually gives plus three gold, because a regular library has a maintenance of one. So, the papermaker will secure your early game economy, it will give you a lot of extra gold, which you'll need, of course, because you're gonna have to promote those uh, archers into composite bowmen, and then all the way up to Chukonus, when you do get machinery as attack. So, you want to be getting papermakers up, you know, pretty much as early as you can, just like you would libraries. Anyway, let us continue our journey. In case you wonder, the map that I'm playing on is a Pin Pangea map, it's standard size, and the game pace on this one will actually be epic instead of my usual standard. And I am not playing with Raging Barbarians, and there should be about 8 AIs in this game, actually 7, 8 with me. So uh, yeah, let's take a look at our starting location. It seems really good, to be quite honest. We got a coastal starting uh, bias, we have fish, we have sugar, Cattle, bananas, and cotton. This seems like a... Oh my god, even more sugar, actually. This seems like a um, good... Uh, if, if I get a pantheon this game, I should definitely pick the uh, one which gives me culture from plantations, because there are a lot of plantations around my capital. I'm going to beeline for writing. Um, when you play on DD, science is the most important thing in the world. If you do not get as much science as you can early game, you will simply be eclipsed. And... Uh, when you play a DD game, I should probably check what tiles I'm working here. I'm currently working the tree food tile, which is not shabby. Um, when you play on DD, you are behind by design, by a lot, and your job is to catch up as well as you can. Um, you, you're pretty much gonna have to take a capital early on if you want to win a DD game. If not, you're simply just not gonna be strong enough. Also, we got some annoying archers there. Luckily, they're not blocking, blocking the encampment. I could kill them if I wanted to, but to be quite honest, I got better things to do, so I might send a unit up to kill them later. Um, but yes, as I said, you are pretty much behind by design on DD, and your job is just to catch up as best as you can. Your biggest job will be to try and get enough science so that you won't get eclipsed by the, your nearby ally, allies, I'm saying, your nearby neighbors. 
And if you do happen to get into a war, you're just gonna have to defend as best as you can. Okay, we got population from this ruin, we got map from the previous one. Population is always nice. It means we're gonna have a uh, pop tree city pretty darn soon. Now we wanna scout for potential neighbors. Um, since I play as China, I don't want any like super early wars. But what I do want... Oh, hello, Manila. That's a maritime city-state. I do like those. But what we do want is a uh, is a war that breaks out approximately once we get machinery. Uh, because that's, of course, when we get our valuable Truco news. So pretty much what I want to do is I want to build up. I want to prepare for that phase. Oh, a mountain. Potential observatory expansion. Expansion, actually. Expansion. Alright, so I think I want to go for a monument next. I am probably going to go with my standard tradition opener. It is really one of the best openers in the game, and on Deity you pretty much have no choice. You need tradition. So let's see who's down here. <sighs> if there's anyone down here, or down here, I expect to meet someone pretty soon. And that looks to be Pocatello. All right, so Pocatello, he is a... Uh, he's not... He's not a an ideal neighbor. Of course, the most ideal neighbor would be Enrico Dondolo of Venice. Um, the problem with Pocatello is he grabs a lot of land early on. He's a very expensive AI. However, he is not that aggressive. He is actually rather conservative and is war-mongering. And he doesn't really tolerate it all that much. Uh, but here is Moson Kani. Um, so his capital is really close to ours. And knowing Pocatello, he's probably going to expand towards us. Um, I think a wise move would probably be to let these warriors be here. Because that might discourage him from sending settlers our way. This is Didi. So he's going to get his first settler very early. This will allow me to control or see what he's up to. Also, we have ourselves another ruin, and we get writing. Wow. I actually didn't catch... Um, I actually did not catch how um, how close we were. However, when you play on DD, AI start with writing, which means that trying to get the Great Library is suicide. Uh, if this was a... Um, if this was a, an Emperor game, I'd probably be going for the Great Library just about now. But this is DD, so one of the AIs have probably started working on it already. So let's take a look. We need calendar for all the plantations. There's also marsh here that we need to clear, which is why we need uh, masonry. Uh, so I'm probably going to go for masonry first. I just want to take a look at the tiles and see what kind of... Actually, you know, we should probably go for animal husbandry first, so we can improve the cattle. Because that's a very good tile. That's a tree food tile, which will be a tree food one hammer tile once we uh, build a uh, once we build a uh, pasture there, which is always nice. There's a lot of good expansions here. A lot of good expansions actually. I'm gonna scout around, see what I can see. Uh, I'm surprised he hasn't built a settler yet. He is probably working on it right now. And knowing him, he probably have selected liberty as his opener. He hasn't gotten one yet. Human. That is actually quite interesting. Anyway, Pocatello is uh, hes annoying because he steals a lot of territory. However, uh, he's also not super aggressive. So, I probably won't have to gear up for a super early war. It's not like I got Shaka next to me. Which is basically a death sentence on Didi. If you, if you get Shaka as your close neighbor, you can pretty much just restart the game on Didi. Because once he gets MP, he will roll over you. And there's really nothing. I, I do believe I have a video on my channel uh, that showcases a DD game with Shaka as my closest neighbor. And on turn 40, he just rolls over me. And there's nothing I can do. All right, that culture is much appreciated, actually. That will give us our tradition opener. And I, I am actually just going to keep my warriors here because if he builds a settler, I want to intercept it. It's actually a pretty viable strategy to just keep a warrior because the AI will get a, will be afraid to send it out towards you if there's a warrior intercepting it. And I want to control his movements and see what he's up to. He's already got silver. You see how insane the, the, the AI is on, uh, on DT speed. 
It just... The, they get such insane bonuses. It, it's not even funny. One thing's for sure. I'm gonna have to try and take Moss and Connie once I get Shuko News. It's my only chance of being remotely competitive in a DD game. And even then, there's no guarantee I'm going to win. I don't think I've ever won a DD game before. Um, I've tried a couple of times, but that was a while ago when I was uh, a little bit worse than what I am right now. I'm gonna have to see what kind of tiles I'm working. I'm working... the tiles seem okay. Yeah, I'm happy with these tile assignments. I don't feel the need to redo them. Alright. We get 30 faith. That will pretty much guarantee us a Pantheon. And I already know that I'm going to be picking the Culture one. Like, I think my Pantheon is going to get eradicated anyway. Because Pocatello usually gets a religion. But I might as well get a, a little bit of Culture. I mean, one thing you can reliably do sometimes... You can uh, go for God King to get a get an early game boost. It's actually not a bad thing to do at all. Hmm. Because God King does boosts like it, it gives you a very nice early game boost, and you can pretty much just rely on it being overshadowed by another religion. Um but I think that it's... Yeah, I'm gonna have to go for culture from plantations. Oral tradition is too good. I got one, two, three, four, five plantations around my capital. That's five culture per turn. That is pretty ridiculous. Alright. So, we are done with the monuments. So, I am gonna be going for a paper maker immediately. And my next upgrade is gonna have to be... I need masonry, pretty much, to clear March, and I need to be able to construct uh, a mines and chop down forests. I could also go for a calendar and then masonry, so I could get the cotton tile. Um, I hope I'm gonna... I'm, I'm planning on stealing a worker. I'm actually gonna go back and see if Ur has any workers. Uh, I could try to steal one from Manila. Okay, here is Pocatello's first settler. Doesn't look like I can stop it. Um, he's gonna expand somewhere around here. It's gonna be annoying as fuck. But again, there's really nothing I can do about that. I can't scare him away. Might as well see if Manila has a worker. Problem with Pocatello is he can't really beat him early on because he got Pathfinders, which are basically scouts with warrior stats. And he's got a lot of them too. Okay, the workers have not spawned yet. I'm gonna go for Ogliarchy. I've heard that I pronounce it wrong. I'm sorry, I guess, if that's the case. I don't really know. Ogliarch Ogliarchy? Ogliarchy? Og Og I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I guess someone can correct me in the comment section. Alright, oh, is that Alexander? Hello, Mr. Ducius Maximus. How are you on this day? Alright, never a boring game with Alexander around. Well, he's gonna pledge his protection on all them city-states. So, Alexander, I'm not sure how close he is to me. Could be a stray scout. But if he is close to me, I'm in for a heck of a game. Because Alexander likes his wars and he likes his backstabbery. Alexander is a very denunciation willing lord. And uh, he really loves his warmongering and he loves being an absolute dick. If there was like a dick rating, Alexander would be on top. Um, we have uh, Mr. Pa Pachakuti, which I also have heard like pronounced wrongly. Um, yeah, the Inca, they're actually a really good civilization. In most games I see this fucker. He does really well for himself. Especially in a game with a lot of cliffs. I do believe I played with World Age 5 million in this game. So there shouldn't be that many cliffs around, which is actually good, because the Incas are really good in cliffs. I can get an embassy with this guy, actually. Um, I'm surprised I haven't seen a city pop up yet. I can't imagine where... He, he's probably going to expand over here, or his settler could have been captured, actually. If that's the case, then I got real lucky. Oh, looky here. A, uh, a ruin. Would be nice to grab that. So, can I go through here? I'm not sure, actually. 
21 turns to get the paper maker. That's almost too much. But at least my city is growing. That's good. Um, someone commented, Manx, what is the sound that you hear in the background? This sound right here. Um, that is the sound of a pair of scissors that I am uh, twindling around with my thumb. Um, it's something I do to think. Uh, when I when I think, I always I twiddle them around like this. I wasn't aware that it got caught up by the microphone, but some people commented and said, what is this strange noise I hear? It is my thinking voice. Or thinking noise, not my thinking voice. This is my thinking noise. This is what I do when I think. Um, but I'll stop because I was not aware you could hear it. Um, I actually listened to it myself and it was actually a very annoying sound. So I am very sorry, guys. Uh, did not intend for that to happen. I'll just put my thinking scissors away for now. It seems like there's like a thin strip of land passing through here. Um, this is a weird map. It seems more like a fractal map than a Pangea map. Are you kidding me? Did Pocatello just... <laughs> what? You settled a city over here? Wow, now that's interesting. Out of all the places you could settle a city, you settle it... I was for sure he was gonna grab this location or something. Huh. Well, that's Pocatello for you. But yeah, since this is an epic game, it's bound to be a little bit slower than my usual ones. However, this also means that my Chukonu will be relevant longer once I get them out. Which is why I opted to go for epic, because I really want to ex extend the period in which the Chukonu are, um, are uh, relevant. Uh, it also seems like Pocatello is clearing out most of the barbarians in the area, which is actually really good for me. Oh... Is it? Yes, it's Boudica. Um, Boudica of the Celts. She is very religious. She is bound to get a religion really early on. Uh, she is also extremely aggressive. And pretty, uh, pretty like, treacherous as well. Um, having her next to uh, the Incas is actually a really good thing for me. It means I should be able to bribe them into fighting each other. And that should uh, make Pacachuti not skyrocket out of control like he usually does every single game I see him. Alright, so I could buy a worker. I'm actually getting a decent amount of gold right here. But I really need to get some extra science, because these tanks are going extremely slowly. Alright, now I can grab legalism, which is, for the most part, pretty crap. Because I don't get my free amphitheater anymore. They really tried hard to nerf tradition, but despite nerfing tradition like five times, it is still the best opener in the game. Before it was just insane, now it's just still better than everything else. I, uh, I don't think nerfing the tradition is the answer, actually. I think buffing the other policies is the, tr is the answer. Yep, there goes to the Great Library on turn 40. Um, the problem with tradition is just the finisher is way too good. 15% growth and a free aqueduct in your four first cities. It is just too good. The free aqueducts just help out so much. It's a building you need, but that you never want to build. Because there's always more important buildings around. And I see Ramkam troll face. Ralph it's Ramkam Hang. Ram Kong Hong. Um, this guy loves his city states. Having him and Alexander in the same. Oh, seriously, he's all the way up there. Having both Ramkam Hang and Alexander in the same game is actually. Is, oh, hello, Ahmad Al Masur. You seem to be in every single game. Now we only need Dido and we have a reunion going here. Um, as I said. No, no, okay. okay. I guess. Um, having these two in the same game is actually going to be hilarious because they they both are like super competitive for city states. If you don't know, Ramkangang is like a or the Siam. They 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 both get a lot of benefits out of city states, so they're going to be very competitive. How do you not have writing? I thought every single AI started with writing on DD. I guess I was wrong. Um, but yeah, I seem to like be running into the same. AIs a lot. At least Morocco has been in almost every single one of my games. Um, so yeah, I'm just I'm just waiting for Dido to show her face. She is probably in this game as well. Mark my words. Uh, but how many have we met right now? We met one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's two leaders that we haven't met yet. So still a chance to meet Dido. Wonderful. I actually kind of want to buy a scout. 
I don't know. I kind of feel like I should buy a spot scout and go steal a worker. Probably a good idea. Yeah, I think I will. So, um, you may have noticed that there's almost no barbarians around, and this is because on DD level difficulty, um, even if you have raging barbarians on, the AIs will simply wipe out all of the barbarians super quick. I mean, they aren't even... You probably won't see many barbarians in this game. Um, the AIs are just ruthless in their clearing of the barbarian encampments. Oh, look at that, Mount Kailash. One of the worst wonders, in my opinion. Um... Give six and uh, faith and happiness, which is all right, I guess. But there's just so many better ones out there. Still, I would take it. Can't remember if it gives a promotion. I do not think it does. And why am I sending my scout this way? I thought I was sending it to uh, to steal a worker. Here's the Pictish warriors. They're the Celtic unique units. They're spearmen, which get faith whenever they kill units, which is actually really good. It guarantees you pretty much a religion in the early game because you can use it on barbarians. They, uh, they're really good at that. Grabbing an honor opener and farming barbarian camps can actually be really good. Alright, I don't know why I was sending my scout this way. Since I'm down here, I might as well go and check Valera, see if it's... Is it under protection? It wants me to take him down a barbarian encampment. Well, that's not going to happen. Yeah, it's really difficult to, to, to complete barbarian camp quests on DD because the AI just wipes them out so quickly. The AIs, or the Barbarians, are of course stronger on DD, but only towards players. I don't believe the AIs gets any penalties against Barbarians on higher difficulties. I really wish the Barbarians would be overall stronger on higher difficulties, actually. Because it's so sad to just see them wiped out immediately. They don't even, they don't even, you know, do anything. They just die. Alright, let's see if Valeras have their worker spawn yet. Does not seem like they have. Okay. Yeah, we are playing on Epic, so naturally it takes a little bit longer for the workers to spawn. I do believe on standard, the workers spawn on... Tra oh, fucking hell. <laughs> oh, oh, this is going to be an interesting game, I tell you that. Jengish Khan has just entered the building. So we got Jengish Khan, we got Alexander, we got Budika. Jesus Christ, this is going to be an interesting game. Now I'm just waiting for Shaka to show his face, and we have ourselves a slugfest. Hmm. Oh look, a ruin. Nice, I found a lot of ruins this game. That makes me really happy. But yeah, I really need to steal a worker. I know that they spawn on turn 40 or 50. I'm st oh, looky here. Oh my god, this is this is beautiful right here. I can get myself... Oh, oh, I need to grab the ruins first. Then I can go take out the encampment. 90 faith. That's actually really cool. That is actually really cool. Do you... Oh, maybe I should go for a religion. If I'm going to do that, I'll need, I'm going to need a shrine. And even then... We have Budika in this game. Budika loves her religion. But aside from that, we actually don't got that many religious people. Uh, Morocco is not particularly religious, nor are the uh, Mongols. Could actually be interesting to see, oh my god. Huh, well I'm gonna try to clear out this encampment, and maybe my other scout is close enough to actually help. Well, I'm gonna try and go for a shrine. I mean, I got 90 fucking faith. If I could actually get a religion on DD, that would be insane. I don't think I'd ever manage to do that. That's hard on fucking Immortal and Emperor. Alright, well... Oh my god, another ruin. Jesus Christ, I can't believe it. Alright, I'm gonna try to get... As you can see right here... Um, on DD, you actually get no bonuses against Barbarians. Um, even on Emperor and Immortal, I do believe you get a 10% bonus. On Deity, they're as strong as normal units. And Alexander finally learned how to read, so he can now build embassies. He's a little bit isolated. That actually scares me a little bit, I gotta say. Now, one thing that I learned... Nice! I got attack. What kind of attack? Trapping. Okay. One thing that I learned, actually, from Quill18... Uh, which is, uh, he's a, uh, or Filthy Robot, I do believe. No, yeah, Filthy Robot, sorry. 
not 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 Quill 18, 18, but Quill the robot. He he made a really good video about barbarians and how exactly they work, and he taught me something very valuable that I was not aware of. Barbarians can never move and attack in the same turn. If you are not within range of these archers at the start of the turn, let's see if I go over here. As long as I'm not close to these archers, they can never move and attack during the same turn. Uh, same goes for hand axes. Uh, they can't move one square and then fire. Uh, barbarians simply do not know how to do it. Um, so you can really utilize this to your advantage and get an early, like, you can basically outmaneuver them. Um, and that is actually really handy info. I was not aware of this. Anyway, it's time to grab archery and the wheel. We need a couple of archers just in case. Could be an early war breaking out. I mean, never say never on Didi. As you can see, I'm having big difficulties taking out this encampment, but um, I'm gonna have to heal up a little bit. I really hope no one else is gonna beat me to this because I want this encampment so badly. Uh, it would it would give me allied status with Alara as well, which is insane. Uh, they'd give me free units. I'm like borderline considering even handing back their worker, but I know that would be pretty stupid. So anyway, I'm gonna get it next turn. That's great. Uh, let's grab landed elite. My happiness is currently not an issue. So let's make Beijing grow a little bit quicker. I have to consider where I want my expansion to go. Uh, Pocatello kind of snatched this one away from me, which makes me a little bit sad. Ooh. Okay, we got scouts with vision. Great. So let's take the worker. And now I'm allied with Valetta, which is amazing. Um, really good. So they'll give me a military unit every 25 turns, which is insane. And what kind of unique unit do they know of? They know of... They should know. The Legion. Okay, so that's the Roman swordsman which can build fort. And look, another fucking settler. Uh, you're getting a little friend with Manila, really? We're sorry, this has caused the divide, I guess. Okay, so that that's that. He doesn't like that. I haven't explored this area right here. I might have that to myself, actually. Which would be really nice. But yeah, I'm happy about that. Got myself a worker. That is really nice. And I can... Uh... So as you can see right here, normally I'd be like, Oh shit, this archer can move and then attack. But now that I know that barbarians can never move and shoot in the same turn, these scouts are completely safe. And, you know, I'm really happy that uh, Filthy Robot pointed this out. Because it has really helped my gameplay against barbarians. Not that they're a big issue on DD anyway, but, you know... It's always nice to know exactly how they work. But yeah, I might have the area north of me for myself, which would actually be really nice. Alright, uh, I'm gonna heal up my scouts just ever so slightly, so that they can escort my worker up. And I probably need to get myself an archer in Beijing to protect. Occasionally there might, as you can see right here, they're just wiping out the barbarians left, right and center. It's absolutely insane. And Siam, yeah, see, Siam, um, Ram Kaheng is actually fairly religious himself. There is absolutely no guarantee I'm going to get my religion. But one can dream. Once I get my shrine up, I'm gonna get it in 200 terms. <laughs> oh, unless I find a city stage somehow or build myself a temple, I don't think that's going to happen. I could rush for an early temple though. It's not the stupidest idea I've ever had. Oh, Brogara is here. Wonderful. Alright, so Pocatello already, already has Spearman. I really hope Valletta will give me a gift before... Okay, so here... A city has already been founded. What's good about this, these locations right here is that his capital is very secluded. So what I could do is I could go straight for his capital without having to worry about his other cities. So that is actually something that's rather nice. So I do like that, but I, I think that trying to grab religion in this game is a little bit far-fetched. I, I will need a temple. And the question is, do I really want to dedicate resources to a temple? I'll need 29 turns just to get philosophy. Hmm. Well, having some faith is never a bad thing. And uh, let's grab some cotton. 
And let us rest up our scouts. So Beijing is size 6 right now. Let's take a look at the, the slots that we're working. I'm pretty happy with these, I'd say. And uh, we need to think about what we want to grab right now. Grabbing an early caravan is really important. Um, and I think that's exactly what I'll do. Although I think it's probably time to grab a settler. Yeah, I'm actually going to go for a settler. It's going to take me 18 turns. This encampment is... It has to be cleared out by now, right? But yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start working on a settler. And I'm going to send it north, probably. Because that's one of the few areas which won't be taken by Pocatello. Um, but I think this is a good time to end the pod. If you if you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like and a comment. Please feel free to come with advice. And let me know how you think this game is going. Do you think it's winnable? It's Didi, so it's going to be very tough. Um, my predictions so far is that I think Pocatello is either going to attack me very early. Or he's not. <laughs> uh, but I think that uh, the Celts will attack the Inca. I think Alexander will probably attack either Rankaheng or Genghis Khan. I think Genghis Khan will probably conquer, Mor conquer um, Morocco, to be quite honest. I think Morocco is going to get wiped out either by Alexander or Genghis Khan, or maybe even both. And I think that, however, the big pain in the butt will probably be Rankaheng, because he's very isolated up in the corner here, and he's probably going to start culture spamming. The Inca might also become a runaway sieve if the Celts fail to conquer them, which they may very well do, considering there's a lot of defensive terrain here for them to work with. So it's going to be very interesting. So yeah, uh, my name is Sun Manx. I hope you guys enjoyed this punch, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.